Hello everybody, welcome back. Part 7 now of this build of this beautiful kit from Airfix. And this is the Austin K2 Ambulance. And it's a gorgeous little model and it's coming out really nice. So in part, um, sorry, did I say part 6? This is part 7, isn't it? Part 6, we painted all the engine gearbox and exhaust and everything. We've painted the wheels and tyres using the Revell paints. So they've come out really nice. And if you remember, we also put our base coat down for our wood grain flooring. Now, yes, I'm repeating myself a million times. This is a beginner's video build. Um, it's sort of beginner's in inverted commas. Beginner's uncovering, I have covered the very, very basic stuff like removing parts from sprue and cleaning up sprue nibs and gluing and all sorts of things. I've done a separate video on airbrushing. This video, it's also aimed at people who want to take their model a little bit further. So you've built a few kits and now you want to try some different weathering effects and fading effects. We're doing some pre-shading, as you can see here. And now we're going to do some wood graining flooring, which is why I've painted this with two different colours of wood. Um, and now we're going to use some oils to make it look like this is plywood and this is actually, uh, you know, planks of wood in the front and then we're going to paint over the front in green and then we're going to chip it away so you can see the wood like it's been worn away by the feet of the people getting in and out. So um, as I say you don't need to do this this is not necessary to build this model you can just paint that brown and carry on. Jess is having a bit of a moan about something. Uh, so we've got some brown oil paint here this is burnt umber this is just from an old really old cheap set of oil paints I've got. You don't need to buy anything fancy and special so I've just got some burnt oil, burnt umber oil paint that looks like the lid has glued itself on. And here I've got a piece of corrugated cardboard and I'm going to put some of this on the cardboard. In fact, a little bit more, just a little bit more than that. There we go. And I'm going to leave that for about two hours. And as you can see, what's happening already is the cardboard is soaking up the oil out of the paint. If I use that now, it will be slightly difficult to work with because it's so thin and runny. Uh, the other thing is it'll take forever to dry. Oil paints take forever to dry. So what I'm going to do is let this cardboard soak all the oil out of the paint. And then we'll have like a, like a paste, if you like, rather than a paint. And we're going to use that and work with that and it will dry a lot faster. So a couple of seconds for you, but it's going to be sort of two or three hours for me. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so that oil has been sat there for about two or three hours. And as you can see... A lot of the oil has been soaked up. So what I'm going to do is paint some of this on. So I've got, a, I'm just using cheap brushes. You don't need nice brushes for this because you might damage them. And as you can see, the paint has kind of thickened up and become more of like a paste. So what I'm going to do is just literally brush it on, like so. And it doesn't need to be neat and tidy. You're just going to brush it on. And we're going to take a lot of it off. But we just want to make sure we've got everything covered. We don't want any bare bits because that's the last thing you want to do. Once you've got your effect, you want to leave the effect. You don't want to have to go in and touch it up. Make sure we get right into the corner. Now you can see we've got the oil paint everywhere. So we've got a, a nice covering. I've got corner bit missed there look I haven't gone right into the corner all the way along that's the sort of thing you want to make sure you do because you don't want to go in afterwards and try and touch it up because you'll ruin the effect so for now we're going to concentrate on this upper level so we'll get the paint in fact we'll just put we'll put oil paint on the whole thing that's the best thing in it so we'll paint the whole thing Just like so. And I know there's going to be some bits covered up with boxes and stuff like that, but you still want to just, you may as well just do the whole thing. Because if you try and sort of miss out bits and stuff, you know, like here I can put the wood grain in. But I want the wood grain to carry on under the box. I don't want the wood grain to disappear. Now, it's not so important on this one, to be honest, because we're going to be covering it with green paint. But if it was something like a, a ship's deck, that wouldn't be painted or the planking in the back of a truck or something that perhaps wouldn't be painted then we would <clears throat> we would um here comes that frog in my throat again then we would uh we would want to make sure we keep the wood grain flowing because we're not going to be covering it with paint whereas here 
a lot of it is going to get covered with green paint. We'll go all the way around this edge <coughs> because that's wood that's going to be well chipped that edge step. There'll be hardly any green paint left on that at all. So again, making sure we've got all the nooks and crannies, all the corners, everywhere. And there we are. So that is that is our floor covered. I could put that to one side. I can probably take that up and use that again because I've got some other bits to do as well. We've got these stretchers to do. We've got the the wooden handles on them. I've looked at some real wartime pictures and it looks as though these things were painted green and then the paint wore off on the handles obviously got chipped so I think we might do that on this one. So we can do the same on those so get them all painted up as you can see and as you can see I'm just putting it on there it doesn't need to be neat and tidy. All right I'll do the other three off camera and I've also gone on and I've got the, the seat bases for the driver and the passenger. And there's also this box here, I should imagine some sort of toolbox. And that's like a base where the uh, spare wheel sits. So we're going to do those as well. So we'll get these. I didn't think these were going to be strong enough to hold it. But we'll get these covered in the paint as well. And these are just painted with a, a matte. I've just airbrushed them with a... I think it was XF57 buff. As you can see, get the wood green, get the oil on there, get it all painted. May as well get the top done as well because we don't know the extent of the, the padding. We don't know where it's going to start and where it's going to finish. So we make sure we get all that done. And as I say, at the end of the day, we're going to be overpainting all this green and then chipping it back. We go so I'm going to get the rest of these bits and pieces painted and then I'll come back we'll just leave this on here to dry out for a bit and then we can work with it okay there's many many different ways of doing this so if you are an experienced modeler and you don't like the way I do it, whatever then that's fine but I'm going to show you the way I do this and how I get the wood grain effect I like um, there are many different ways of doing it but um Basically, some people now would come in with a sponge and start rubbing it off with a sponge. Uh, some people would put it on a lot thinner um, and then sort of play with it afterwards. I like to just get it on there. As you can see, we've got a good old layer of that oil paint on there. And then we can play with it. And because it's oil, we can play with it for two or three days. If you do this now, and then you get up tomorrow and look at it again, you think, oh, I don't like that. Just get some thinners and rub it all off and start again. Um, what I'm using here, I've got some in this, in this little... Um, palette there's some of this this is odorless mineral, mineral spirit I like to use odorless thinners or odorless mineral spirit rather than neat enamel thinners two reasons one is it doesn't smell obviously because it's odorless enamel thinners I find the smell absolutely disgusting like this stuff here I find the smell of it absolutely disgusting um, but also it doesn't attack the plastic so readily enamel thinners will you know in its neat state will kind of attack the plastic and especially if you've got little thin fine parts like you can find I, I did it I've, I've done washes using enamel thinners on tank tracks and they've literally fallen apart um, where it's attacked the plastic so uh, odorless thinners is the best if not lighter fuel will also do the trick um, and that doesn't attack the plastic either the other thing you can get if you can't find if you can't find this wherever you are you can get this one here, you can get this from Premium Hobbies. Modeler's Oils Thinner and Cleaner, it's absolutely awesome. Modeler's World, sorry. Modeler's World Oils Thinner and Cleaner. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Again, it's odorless. Well, it's not odorless, it has a it has quite a pleasant smell actually, but it's, it's not very smelly. Um, but you need this to be to be working with these oils. So if I take this for example, this seat box. You know, I, I can go like this and I can get this wood grain effect, but as you can see, nothing much is happening. So what I'm going to do is take most of the oil off of the brush with a rag, a paper towel, and I'm just going to put some thinners in the brush, dab it on the paper towel, and then you can see I can work with it 
this is not really the right brush to be doing this with. I'm going to use a different brush. This brush here is a lot softer. So I'm just going to get some of that thinner, just take it off on the paper towel. And then you can see we can work the oil. It's become a lot easier to work because we've thinned it out. All right, so we can put through that like that, and then we can leave that. Just leave it to settle out a bit and then play with it again after. I'm going to grab my stand over here and stand these parts up. We'll get rid of that spare tire because we don't need that. And we can do the same here. Now that we have this, this brush has a very small amount of oil in it. But as you can see, we can make the, the brown oil paint flow around a lot better than we could before. Okay, and we'll probably we'll probably take most of that off because as you can see it's very dark. It's too dark. I don't like it. But you will be quite surprised at the effect you can get with this. There we go, we've taken a lot of that away. So I can wipe the brush off on the paper towel. And then with these stretchers, you can see now how this kind of wood grain effect is going to work. I don't know if you can see that on there now. But you can see that we're getting a fairly accurate looking wood grain. And this is all about getting it wet, letting it dry out, getting it wet, letting it dry out. And when it's wet, it will brush around. When it's dried out, it won't move around so easily. So you can kind of play with it. But as I say, this is for those who want to take their models that extra step further. You know, you could do this on a, on a piece of scrap, like an old bomb or something you've got spare from a model in practice. It's very, very satisfying, especially when you get it right. Remember, all the time this oil paint is sat on here, it's kind of staining what's underneath. Especially when you've got, like over here, I've got this XF57. It's a matte paint, it's porous, it will soak up the oil. So it's kind of staining it. So there you can see, we've done all of them now. So we can leave those, and then this we can play with. Again, the brush is still... The brush is still wet. Put a little bit more in there. Just dab it on a paper towel to dry it out a bit. And then down here, I'm gonna come along brush this oil and remember the wood grain would be front to back on here because these are like planks and then I think on the side here it would be going left to right and then the same here it's going to be front to back as you can see we're starting to see a kind of wood grain effect. Now, if you were doing something that was like a teak or, um, you know, a mahogany, you might want to leave it like that and then just play with it and get the, get the wood grain in there just by brushing it like this. Okay, you can see now that you're starting to see a wood grain effect on it. Dry the brush off, remove some of the paint. As you can see, the more you brush it, the more you dry it out, the better you get that wood grain effect. But as I've said many times, this is not the effect we're looking for. It's too, way too dark. But I'm using a dark paint because you'll see the final effect I want to get. Now back here, I'm going to get some thinners on the brush. You can see that what we're doing here is removing a lot of the paint. 
because this back here is plywood and as we all know plywood tends to be quite light in colour. Okay so there we are so we've done that and I'm going to leave that now leave that for a few minutes just to dry out and then we can play with it some more and that's the whole thing with it you can just play with it to your heart's content who misses Right, I'll leave that for half an hour, let it dry out a bit, and then I will be back. Right, so after about half an hour, we've got our oils on there, and as you can see now, I can brush them and hardly anything happens. So, I can push down fairly hard with the brush, and I can pull the paint around. And if I want to, I can have like a sort of look like that. Okay, so I can have this blotchy look or I can have like a fairly plain looking sheet of plywood. Don't worry about the intersection, we're going to deal with that in a minute. I can have a plain looking sheet of plywood. I can come in with a cotton bud. And I can rub some of the paint away. Just like so. And then Use the brush to move around what's there. And as you can see, we've got now, you can see the paint underneath through it and what we've got is like a fairly realistic looking piece of plywood. So as you can see, this, this dark brown mess has now turned into something which is more like we want to see. Yeah. Now the other thing we can do is add some knots. So if I take some of the oil paint on this little, little knackered old brush here, this is absolutely knackered, this brush. So I can just come along and go like that, put, put some paint down on there. It's not even going to go down because that brush is so, so knackered. Um, I tend not to use good brushes for oils because it tends to ruin them. Um, and I never mix my brushes up. I never use the same brushes for oils and acrylics. So here we are, we could put some brown down there and we'll put some down there and perhaps some here and another one there, there we go, another one there as well. And these are going to look like knots. As you can see. take away some of their length just by brushing across them and this is the beauty as I've said so many times this is the beauty of using oils you can play with it to your heart's content you can do whatever you want with it and as I say if you don't like it you just take it off you can see there we now have a pretty realistic looking plywood floor now you can see the paint underneath it through the oil. If you just painted this in a buff colour, you would end up with a very sort of plain looking sheet of plywood, which is absolutely fine. You could go with another colour of oil on there if you want to. But there we have our plywood floor. And don't be worried about keeping playing with it because you just will not ruin it. You just keep going. Just keep doing that. If you want to add some knots again, just come in with your brown paint again. Grab some of the brown paint. Grab some of the brown paint, he says. And just put a brown dot down there, put a brown dot down there. One there. And one there. And then you can leave that to dry. When that's nearly dried out, then you can play with it then. So on to the front area here. Again, as you can see, we can just brush it and get the effect we're looking for. 
we could remove some of the cotton bud. Let's get a new cotton bud. And again, you see by removing it, you can also get a completely different effect. So you could have, say, one plank looking different from the others, or have three planks looking different from the others. As you can see by doing that, we can get that kind of... What I'm seeing on the camera looks very golden compared to what I'm seeing in real life. You can see there by using a cotton bud you can also get the effect. You can do whatever, I mean you could get a piece of cardboard and rub it on there. I mean, here we go, get a bit of cardboard, rub it on there, look. Get a different effect, try it down here. You know what I mean? You could use your finger, you could do anything you want. And it's just, and that is the beauty of using these oils. There is no right and wrong way of doing any of it. You can just, which is what I was saying at the beginning, you know, other people will say, I don't do it that way. Yep, fine. This is the way I do it. And this is the way I'm showing people. Okay, and again, come back with the brush. right back into that corner and pull it out and we can brush over here again as you can see we have a wood grain effect going on Just like so. And then what I'm going to do here, brush over into that. What I'm going to do here is get a piece of paper. I'm going to hold the piece of paper down on here where the demarcation is and then We should then get a difference in the, it doesn't need to be too definite, I mean you could actually scribe a line on her if you want to, it doesn't need to be too definite, but um, what we're after is, is a difference between the two, because we're going to wear some of the green paint away between the, between the two. So this area here will be painted green, this will be left bare plywood. Now we've got those knots sort of slightly dried out, we can now brush over them. Probably should have left them a bit longer actually because they're still a bit soft. But uh, this is the thing that like I see, keep saying I can play around with it to be honest content. Just like so. Okay, go like that, brush it like that. We can come along and put some wiggles in it. If you want to get a bit of a wiggly wood grain going on. And as I've said just now, we could we could do this tomorrow if you wanted to. We come back and play with it tomorrow. Put some thinners on the brush, get it all going again, and you're away. But as you can see, this is fairly dry. Because that's how we want it to be. We want it to be drying out. We don't want to be waiting for weeks for the oil paint to dry out. And there we go. So I'm going to call that done. Just get one more little wipe on here with a cotton bud. This time I'm going to roll the cotton bud over the surface rather than wipe it. like so and then brush it some more if you want to if you don't like the effect this is great if you're into your World War One aircraft because there's loads of wood all over them
and there we are. There's our wood grain effect done. So happy with that. As I say, on the camera it's looking quite orange, but it's um it's actually to my eye it's brown. It's not orange at all. And there we are. All right, so that's that done. Now these stretchers, I've gone over again and brushed them under the idea. I sanded the sides out because there was a mould seam. And of course we've got this tan coloured plastic. So I put some of the brown oils on, on there and it looks absolutely fine. So I was sort of wondering, we could have just left this floor tan perhaps and not, you know, just put the oil straight on the plastic. The trouble is I don't think it would have stuck very well. But uh, we've also got that, that brush painted Revell paint. I don't know if you can see it in there. It's given us a bit of a wood grain here. You can see it. it's, it's given us a bit of wood grain with the brush marks, which is uh, something you want to achieve. Um, because there's no wood grain molded into the plastic, it's just flat, flat plastic. But, uh, I'm happy with that. I'm going to leave that like that, I think. As I say, if you want to, you can come along and remove even more paint certain areas and then just brush around the oils move them all about just like that and as you can see the other thing that's a bit annoying I've got a bit of dust stuck under there so I'm going to grab a pair of tweezers and just scratch that it's a little hair or something. Scratch that away and then we can brush the wheels over it and it just becomes a mark then rather than being a hair. So there we go that's going to be underneath the stretcher anyway so it's not really going to notice but um there we are and as I say get the get my piece of paper across here like that and then again brush like that so we can get that demarcation between the two. There we are. So you've now learned how to do wood grain effects. I need to do the same on these now. I'm going to remove some paint, lighten them down and then I'll come back and show you what it all looks like. Right, so here we are now, 36 hours later, and this oil paint is pretty much dry. So what we need to do now is seal it. Whenever you use oils, you must seal them because <clears throat> they don't dry. They, they, won't, they do dry eventually, but you're talking a very, very long time. So to be able to do anything else to them, we need to seal them in. And I want to mask this floor and paint these sides here. We're going to mask this rear floor and paint this area green. Um, and then we're going to chip it and stuff. So basically what we need to do is seal it all in. For this I'm going to use this. This is LP24. and This is a Tamiya lacquer paint. It's semi-gloss clear. Now you can get XF, sorry, X35, which is an acrylic um, semi-gloss clear. So it's not as hot as this. It's not as smelly uh, and it's, it's not as bad for you, but it's still bad for you. You still need to use a mask and everything. Um, there are lots and lots of different clears. You've got the Modeler's World versions here. This is the uh, this is the matte. There's a gloss and a semi-gloss. Uh, so they're very good as well. Anti-UV varnish. Very, um, very easy to use. Uh, they come with a pipette. So you literally just take them out of the bottle, drop them into your airbrush and that's it. Job done. Um, and they're very good. You've also got your Aqua Gloss, which is very, very good uh, from... Um, from... Um, Alclad and then you've got every manufacturer makes their own gloss varnishes and you can basically use any of them I'm using this one because it's a lacquer based paint and it dries as hard as a nail um, Hard as nails so you know when I want to come in and chip it, I know it's not going to react I don't know like for this one here if I start chipping on this if I start adding water will it start to affect that I know that with this one it's hard as nails it'll form a really hard shell over that oil paint and that'll be it so that's what I would advise to use. Or you could use uh, X20, that is X20, X20 clear um, gloss thin, thinned with um, Mr. Color Leavening Thinners. That will be just as hard. This I've, pre I've, I've thinned already in the jar. Um, so I can just pour it straight into the airbrush. 
always wipe the side of the airbrush off because if you get a run, run on the side it'll go down here and then pff, all over your model so you want to make sure you do that and then always put the lid back on and the other thing to do don't ever do this okay if you're going to put put your paint to one side without putting the lid on do that all right or put the lid on properly the problem is when you do this Okay, with that, you will come along, you will pick the paint up and it will grab the bottle. And as you can see, it grabs the bottle. And you get to here and it will fall down. So either put the lid on properly or not at all is my advice. Ask me how I know. Right. So I'm going to get my paper towel wherever it went. I'm going to put this under here to protect the, uh, just do a little test. Yep, that's fine. You hear the compressor go in there and I'm just going to lightly spray over this wood grain and I'm using a semi-gloss because it will enable me to chip easier okay and it will also give a nice looking finish to this plywood floor at the back because remember we're not painting over that we're only painting over the front part so we can add some there Make sure we get nice coverage all over here. And then we can just let that dry. Leave that for a good few hours. Let that dry. Let it really work in. It will bite into the oil paint and it will dry. And then we can do the same with these bits here. And we'll make sure we get good coverage. We're even painting the areas that you know, we're not going to be wood graining because we want to basically seal in the oil paint. I shouldn't say wood grain, it's the areas we're not going to be chipping, should I say. Okay, so that's all them done. Then we've got the stretchers as well. And we're going to go around those handles, make sure we get all around them. And then down the sides, around the handles, and then down the side, just like so. And I'll do all them the same. And as I say, then I'll leave this for a good sort of, I don't know, 12 hours. Let it go really, really dry before we do anything else with it. Just quickly run over that again, just to make sure it's all sealed in. And there we are. And that's it. And you can see on that. That floor at the back now, we've got a very slight sheen to it rather than a gloss. And it looks a lot more realistic and we can put some footprints and all that in there. So I'll get the rest of these stretchers done and then I'll be back. Alright, so after a few hours, that, uh, that's all dried now. So we can see it's all looking good. So we've got that satiny wood colour and then we've got the, the wood effect on those as well. So now it's time to mask up and spray this area here cream. So we're going to mask this area here. Now, obviously, I don't want to put tape on it on the on the smallest amount as I can. Really, I want to put tape on the smallest amount I can. So I'm going to get some of this six mil Tamiya tape. And what I'm going to do is put it on my hand, like so. Pull it off. That and that just removes some of the tackiness of the tape, and that will make it less tacky and less likely to lift what's below it. There we are. Right, so now I can put this in here. I can butt that tape up against the edge there. And we have our masking in place. We just grab a, I'll grab a cocktail stick to do this with. Just push it into the corner, just like so. So now we have our corner masked, or our, our floor masked. Now this one will be slightly more difficult because... That's going to drop down in there. Is that going to go into the corner? Looks like it's a little high actually, but uh, I 
could always trim that. Got a nice fresh blade in the in the knife, so I can come along with the with the knife. Just go into the corner and cut the tape, and then get a pointy pair of tweezers. And we should be able to pull that bit of tape out of there. There we go. Just like that. See, masking is not a big issue. Right, and then we're going to mask. Let's grab a piece of paper again. We're, going to, we're only going to be spraying this area here, so we're going to mask all this off. So what I'm going to do here is cut, cut a piece of paper, just like so. that on there. So there we've got all that area there masked as well so we're not going to get any white paint on it or cream paint should I say. And then what we can do is just get a couple of little pieces on the sides here and just cover that up. There we go. Now when we spray that, we know we're going to be all good. So we're just going to tape that down there. There we are. So now we can hold that, we can spray it and it's all going to be good. A little piece of masking tape there can go away. So we need to do this pretty quickly because that, the longer that masking tape stays on there, the more likely it is to pull what's underneath. So uh, we need to be careful with that. Um, so the only bits we're going to be spraying cream at the moment is this bit here. We do have the rest of the body work to do, which I'll probably do off... Well, I don't know. But uh, before we do that, I want to glue those parts on, don't I? So we have to get the... We're going to get the parts up together and we're going to glue these little supports on for the uh, stretchers. So first things first, with small parts like this, it's best to remove the paint. So. I'm just going to come in here in those little location areas and just scrape away the paint till we see some tan plastic. It doesn't need to be perfect as long as you've got some plastic showing the glue will eat through the paint anyway but it's just to get a nice quick bond. And then here we've got the raised tabs are so going to go into there so we'll just clean them off just like that. Just like that. As they used to say. And there we are. And then we can get this in position. They're the same both sides, so we don't need they're not handed or anything. So we can get this into position. It's quite awkward actually. Get these to stay in the right place. It's going to be there. I'm, going to be, I'm not going to be able to do this on camera because I need to hold it so that you can't see what I'm doing. Um, let's try doing this side. Basically, those legs have just got to go into there and sit in there like that. See, they just want to keep falling over. Try that. I use the quick setting cement this time. If you notice, I've done this after I've masked the floor in case they drop off. If they ruin that nicely painted wooden floor, we would not be happy, would we? So we can grab these tweezers. As you see how easy they move out of position. They're not of the greatest of fit.
So there we are, I'll do the other one off camera because it's so awkward and then I'll be back. Okay, so we've got the floor all masked up as you've seen. We've got those bits glued in and the glue's all dry now so they're ready to paint. Now inside here they are telling us to paint the interior here 103 which is cream. Um, and I'll show you the colour here, cream. 103, there we go, matte cream. So it's a very, very creamy colour. Uh, some photographs I've seen of these inside are white summer cream. Very difficult to tell with modern vehicles because they've been restored, repainted, whatever. And then if it was originally white, it may have yellowed. So whatever, we'll go for this cream. Now I've mixed this up myself. Um, this is actually, you can see the pot is wooden deck tan and there was just a tiny drop left in here. And what I've done, I've added some white to it. So I've made, well, the top has glued itself on. I've made a, a cream colour, as you can see. So that's why I've mixed my own because I don't actually have the 103. So what we're going to do is get our airbrush over here. I'll do a little bit of painting on screen and I'll do the rest off. I've got this mix fairly thin. Um, it's probably about 60% thinner, so it's quite thin. And the reason I've done that is so that I can basically put it on very lightly and then our pre-shading will show through. And that's the whole objective here is so that the the outer edges remain darker than the center. Okay, so just do a little test patch there. I may have to thin this paint some more. I'll start with the I'll start with this panel here. So look at that. Straight away I got a spatter. So very lightly just building up the colour. Yeah, I'm going to have to thin this some more. I think it's going down a bit heavy. So I'm going to thin it down some more and go from there. Okay, so we thin it down some more. Uh, so we've got it thin now and we can spray it down. It comes out nice and even. It's flowing nicely. And the reason we want it thin is because we want to be able to see through it. We don't want it to just cover in one coat. We want to be able to see through it. So if I show you again on this side, this side is untouched. So what I'm going to do is just build the paint up. So I'll go across first of all. And then I'm going to go vertical. You can see it's very, very slowly building the colour up. And I'm going to concentrate in the dark areas. And there we go. As it dries, the black will come through, so you can go a little bit lighter than you might want to go ordinarily, and then as it dries, the black will come through, it will darken up. But now you can see on there, rather than having this sort of singular, just cream colour, like that's white, that's green, we've got this kind of distemper to the colour. It's got a sort of a bit of life to it, a bit of depth. I was going to put some brown down here and do some wood chipping on that edge, but it hasn't worked, so we'll leave that for now. Just spray the inside of this door. It actually does look quite grubby, doesn't it? That's quite good. I'm just going to get in the edge of that doorway there. As you can see, as it's dried, the black has come through. But you can see on there we have this kind of shaded colour. It's not just that cream. It's blotchy. Okay, so as I say, this is more advanced than, than beginner level. If you're a beginner and you just start with an airbrush, just paint it cream. You don't need to worry about all this rubbish that I'm doing. But um, you know, if you want to just go that little bit, little bit further, and I'm showing you how to sort of get there. So I'll get the rest of the, uh, I've got all this panel work here to do. We've got the roof and everything over there. So I'm going to get all that done. Um, and then I'll come back and show you how it looks. And we'll probably call that a day for this video. I'll do this floor as well. The reason I'm not doing this on camera, I want to do it in the booth because I've got to get in, the, in and out a lot of 
nooks and crannies. I'm going to be a long time doing it and the paint absolutely stinks so I'm going to get it in the booth and get it done. So I'll see you back in a minute. Okay so there we go you can see there's those bits that you saw earlier painted up nicely. We've got the floor done so we can unmask this now. Leave this masking on for the minimum amount of time and I know that all you guys everybody loves to see a bit of unmasking. A bit of live unmasking on YouTube is pretty satisfying stuff. So I'll just rip this tape off. I'm going to make sure I pull the tape inwards because I don't want to go damaging those rails where the stretchers go. So we can pull that that way. There we go. And then we can do the same here, pull that that way. And there we are now you can see we've got our lovely cream coloured back end with the nice plywood floor so oh look at lovely you can see there's a bit of shading on there as well and then what's going to happen is the stretcher is going to sit on there like that you can see once the stretcher's all painted green and everything it's going to look lovely in there so there we are bright so i've now got to do some more masking and painting but i'll show you what else i've done Painted the roof. There's the roof done. You can see that's still showing it's still wet. A bit of pre shading in there. So you can see it shining through. And then we've got the insides of the doors. I'm probably going to have to do those again. I, I should have gone a bit heavier on them, I think. So I think the inside of the doors will get quite battered and beaten um, in real life. And then over here we have the. Let's turn that over so I'm not putting that roof there on its wet paint. And here we have the side panels. And they look, uh, in my opinion, they look great. I haven't done these uh, rests here. These are for the upper uh, stretchers because they've got to be glued onto these end mountings and then glued into the sides. So that what I'll do is I'll get these assemblies built up and then I'll paint them black and pre-shade them and everything and then paint them together. Otherwise, it's going to look a bit odd. It's going to be different colour to everything else. So I'll get those done as an assembly and then paint them all together. Again, as I keep saying, paint as much as you can as an assembly and it will make life a lot easier for you. We also did inside that area there, don't forget to do in there because you'll see through this slot here, you'll see the inside of that. And then we're also going to have to paint this here green. We've got ejector pin marks in there to deal with, which is a shame. But um, yeah, we'll have to paint that in there green uh, before we glue those on and that'll save us having to mask up and everything. So there we are. Um, so that's been part six. We can throw that away. That's been part six. So I shall see you soon for part seven. I'm actually um, filming all of this uh, sort of you know you haven't even seen the introduction yet <laughs> so I'm filming it all up front so I don't sort of get to the end and so basically you won't see any of these until the model is actually either finished or newly finished. So uh, not sure when the next video will be up but um, I'll see you all for it anyway. Thanks for watching. Um, bye for now. Just to show you again. It does look great, doesn't it? Just do that a little bit of extra work with a bit of paint and everything. It sort of takes your models to that extra step.